How's it going everyone? In this video, I want to talk about enums. It's probably going to be a short video because they're a pretty simple concept to understand, but they're super useful. So what is an enum? Well, an enum is essentially just a labeled list. And I know that sounds boring, but they're super useful and I use them all the time. So let's have a look. To create an enum, you're going to go to your content browser, right click, go to blueprint and select enumeration. Now, for the sake of demonstrating this concept, I'm going to pretend we're using this for a movement system. I'm not actually going to create a full fledged movement system, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. We're going to name this enum E underscore movement states. So when you open this, you're going to see a couple of things. The first thing is enum description, and you'll see that when I hover over it, it says shows up in the content browser when the enum asset is hovered. So this is just a description of your enum. We'll call this a list of movement states. You also don't have to do this. This is just for code cleanliness. And we're not going to talk about this bit mask flags option today. That's for a different video. So now what we'll do is we'll add an enumerator and you're going to see we get this field here that says display name. It has a default value of new enumerator zero and then an optional description over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this walk and then I'll create another one and we'll call it sprint and we'll create a third one and call it crouch. And if you wanted each of these to show up with a description when you hover it, you could put it over here. I'm not going to do that right now. One important thing to note is that these cannot be left blank. If I try to get rid of walk, you're going to see you must provide a name. And if I click away, it's just going to put walk back there. Now you might be thinking, okay, that's cool, but how do I define values for these things? And you don't actually define any sort of values inside of the enum itself. Again, this is just a labeled list. So in order to use this, what we're going to do is we're going to create a blueprint. And obviously if we were making a movement state, we would use a character. Again, just to keep things simple, I'm going to make an actor and I'm just going to call this demonstration. And we'll go ahead and open that up. All right, now here in the event graph, in the variable section, we can add a new variable and we can call this movement states. Now, if we search for that enum we created by typing in E underscore movement, you'll see we have E movement states. Now, you'll notice the engine has its own movement mode enum here. We're going to use our custom enum. So just set that data type. And now let's have a look at this. So if I drag this in and I say get movement states, you're going to notice it looks like any other variable. But if I drag this in and I set movement states, you're going to see we get a drop down here. And that's the first thing about enums that's kind of useful. I kind of conceptually think about these as drop down menus. So if I compile this and select this, you'll see in the details panel, it shows up as a drop down as well. Furthermore, if I make this instance editable, compile, save, and drag our blueprint into the world, you're going to see in the details panel, we have this drop down. Now, how do we actually make use of this? Well, here's where enums come in really handy. They work alongside of the switch node. So if I drag off of this and I type in switch on E movement states, you'll see it shows up here. We now get this handy node, and this is really useful for flow control. You might be familiar with integer switches. So let's just call this, let's just create a variable and call it my integer. And then if I come out of here and I do switch on int, you'll see I have a switch node similar to this one, except I can add pins and they're all just labeled after different ints. Now this is way more readable. And so I find myself using this over a switch on int or any other value really. Now, the reason I'm using movement modes for the example here and something that enums have going for them over booleans is that you can only have this set to a given value at once, which yes, is true of any variable type. But let's say, for example, we wanted to do this with booleans. Well, we would have a Boolean called is walking. We would have a Boolean called is sprinting and a Boolean called is crouching. Now, in most games, only one of these things can be true at a given time. 
in the animation blueprint, we might want to reference this enum and determine what animation we're going to play based on what we're doing. So what we would have, and for demonstration, I'm obviously not going to use enhanced input. I'm just going to use regular inputs. But if I type in, say, input shift, left shift, normally you press left shift to sprint. What we could do is we could set this to sprint. And on released, we could maybe set it back to walk and then left control. We could set to crouch and this is not perfect. You'd have to do a little bit more management of these. But the idea here is that when I press shift, I'm going to automatically switch to sprinting. And I'm not going to be walking anymore because this can only be one value. So let's, for example, let's just go to event tick and let's print string. And let's just print out our enum value. Like so. And what I'll do is I will get world delta seconds just so that I can plug this into the duration so it won't be going down the screen. Now another thing we have to do is possess this, so let's just delete this player start. And we'll go to auto possess, auto receive input player zero, we'll hit play. Okay, so one more thing, we we're going to want to set a default value in this movement state variable, so let's set it to walk by default. And you're going to see it's printing walk, if I press shift, it's sprinting. Now if I'm holding shift and I press control, it's just going to move to crouch. Now, where you'd have to do some more management is if I let go of crouch, it's staying on crouch. You would have to decide how you want these to interrupt one another. But the point here is that this is already easier than booleans. With booleans, you would have to check, okay, is sprint true? If so, we have to set walking and crouching to false. Otherwise, is crouching true? And I just find this to be a much more useful solution for something like that. I also find myself using these in behavior trees because again, as soon as the value changes, my behavior tree is going to go down whatever line that enum is directed to. If that's confusing, don't worry about it. We're not talking about behavior trees in this video. It's just an example of where I would use this. Now, another place that I find myself using enums is in the construction script if you're trying to create some sort of utility blueprint. So for example, you may have some sort of asset like say signs, for example, at one point I had a sign asset pack that I made. And in it, let's just call this E underscore signs. In my enum, I had say stop sign 20 miles per hour, 30 miles per hour, no parking and so on and so forth. Then in my blueprint, let's just get rid of these. I don't care that that's in use. We would create a sign option enum. And we would get it and we would switch on the value. And then depending on which one of these it was, we could change the mesh and the texture that was on the mesh to be that sign. And we could, of course, set this to instance editable, drag it into the world. And now, because it's in the construction script, anytime we change this value, that construction script is going to run and it's going to execute all that logic. If that's confusing and you don't know what construction scripts are, don't worry, I'm making a video on construction scripts, so stay tuned for that. One other small thing to note is that enums can be treated much like other variables in that you don't have to switch, you can just do a simple equals operator, but there are two different ones, so enums are actually stored as bytes. So if you drag off this and you get a comparison operator that has what looks like an integer in it, this is comparing it to a byte. What you want to do instead is look for this equal and then in parentheses enum and you'll see we can check if it equals any one of the values that we put in that enum. But yeah, that's really all you need to know about enums to get started using them. If you have any questions or comments, you can post them down below. You can also join my discord where I'll try my best to help you out. There's a bunch of us always in there trying to help each other out. 
So definitely feel free to do that. I'll have a link in the description. And yeah, that's all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and best of luck in your projects.